So dollar cost averaging is essentially the best strategy in crypto. And if you don't know about it already, if you're new here to crypto or investing in general, you absolutely need to have this strategy in your arsenal or at least be aware of it. And we're going to go into exactly what it is and what the math of it is. So, so simply put, you know, let me Google that for you. What is dollar cost averaging? It's basically an investment strategy where an investor divides up the total amount in which you want to invest across a periodic set of purchases in whatever target asset you want in an effort to reduce the impact of overall volatility. So what that means is you don't have to time the market in crypto and investing in anything. And when it comes to hacks, you don't want to time the market. Time in the market beats timing the market. Okay, so basically all the DCA strategy is, is putting in little bits of money over time to lower what's called your average cost or your cost basis so that effectively you're in profit at a much earlier rate and you feel a lot better because you don't have to try to guess the perfect bottom of the market. And you don't have to sit there with your eyes on the screen all day and try to guess the perfect bottom because nobody ever does that. Let's be realistic, okay? Now, I went over some math, which I tweeted out yesterday. If you want to check that tweet, please do. But using Hex as an example, this is a really, really crude example of the power of dollar cost averaging, right? Let's just say you put in $1,000 at about 40 cents and you bought Hex at 40 cents. Let's say you almost bought pretty much the top, okay? Not many people actually bought the 50 cent top, but there's a, probably a handful of people out there that bought the 40 cent top. And if you haven't sold yet, I'm going to teach you a way that you can make yourself feel a lot better about this bear market, okay? So let's say you put a grand in at 40 cents. Well, the total hex you bought with that is 1,000 divided by 0.4, which is 2,500 hex. But if you actually believe in the long-term vision of hex, which you should, and you realize that crypto is cyclical, and you also realize that hex is not going anywhere. I mean, we've got like 50 minimum YouTubers all over the place carrying the narrative of this thing. We're not going to let it die. And it's all about which cryptos get back up in the next bull market, right? Because 95% of them probably won't, but the handful of ones that actually have product market fit and a good working functional product, not to mention founder, community, website. We do everything better. Anyway, guys, if you believe in the product long term and you want to dollar cost average in at the dips, this is what we preach so obnoxiously over and over again. So let's say you double down on your investment and you say, all right, well, I bought the top, but now we're at maybe an 85, 90% discount from all time highs. Maybe now it's time to double down and actually buy the dip like everybody talks about all the time, right? So let's say now you put even more in so you put $2,000 in at the seven cent mark, which is about where we're at today. Well, look, this would have bought you exponentially more hex, right? Instead of 25,000 hex, 2,000 divided by 0.07 is 28,000 hex. Okay, that's how I'm getting these numbers right here. You can do this yourself. If you know how to use Excel, if you don't, you should probably learn. It's a pretty basic life skill at this point. And then all you really do from here is you take each purchase you have at whatever hex price you bought at, and you take the amount of hex that you bought with each transaction, okay? You add them together over here on this side. And this is really easy to do because you're pretty much looking at how much hex do I have in my wallet? Okay, I've got 31,071 hex, okay? And how much did I put in? Well, total, I put 1,000 plus 2,000. So I put $3,000 in total. So what's my effective cost basis? Well, it's really simple. If I've got 31K hex and I put in $3,000, we just do 3,000 divided by 31,000, and that gives us an effective cost basis of 0 0.097. So we effectively have bought hacks at 9.7 cents just by doubling down on our investment and buying the dip, even if we bought the top. If you put in even more and you're weighted more heavily at the lower prices, it's going to weight your overall cost basis towards a very favorable number. So now all you have to do is wait till hex goes back up to 10 cents and you're effectively in profit. So you're not feeling the pain of loss that everybody else is feeling around you. Now that's a very basic example. Let's go to another example. Let's just say you did a really structured and rigid uh, cost, a dollar cost average strategy all the way from the top and all the way down to 10 cents. And let's just say, you know, you're putting in an even $1,000 at every 10 cent mark. This is an okay way to do DCA and we can do even better, which I'll show in a minute, but even just putting in one grand, like a robot, not even thinking about it, just every 10 cent mark, you're putting in $1,000 and you're buying $1,000 of hex at 50 cents, $1,000 at 40 cents, $1,000 at 30, 1,000 at 20, 1,000 at 10. Well, the total hex that you're gonna end up with is 22,833, and you ended up putting $5,000 in over the course of the last you know, 11, 12 months, whatever it is. Well, 5,000 divided by 22,833 is a cost basis of 21 cents or 22 cents about. Now this is okay, but it's not super great, right? Now we have to wait till hex goes up to 
basically 22 cents. So Hex basically has to triple from here, which it does all the time, especially in these low liquidity environments. Guys, it is not hard for a coin to double, triple in a matter of a few days. Okay, especially a low liquidity coin like Hex. That's the point of having lower liquidity. It makes it more retail friendly. It makes it more pumpable. And it also makes it more dumpable. So side tangent here, lower liquidity actually allows us to shake out the maximum amount of weak hands on the way down. That's why you see these big wicks and then they get eaten up so quickly. It's because people have their limit orders ready to go. Check out my last video. And they're ready to dollar cost average. Whereas the plebs, the paper hands that can't hold on to anything more than a week or two, they shouldn't have been here in the first place. So this is basically the ultimate shakeout, what we're going through right now. But anyway, this pairs really nicely with the limit order video. So if you haven't checked out that video that I just did yesterday, check that one out. And this is how you would essentially execute a dollar cost average strategy. You would place a limit order at five, 50 cents, 40 cents, 30 cents, 20 cents, 10. And then you wouldn't be so much in the hole because effectively you would have had your cost basis, your average weighted cost at 22 cents. Now you're still down on your money, right? And that's what I mean, we can do better. So what I like to do is I like to actually scale in my buys and, and buy heavier the lower we go. And I don't like to buy tops, right? Like when we were at 50 cents, I wasn't buying over there, okay, quite frankly. Uh, all time highs are, are typically not the time to buy and I know it's easy to get carried away. I know a lot of people did buy the highs and that, that's totally fine because you can save yourself with enough time and enough smart dollar cost averaging and using limit orders and all that stuff. But let's say, you know, you saw Hex dipping from 50 cents down to 25 and you figured maybe that's a good time to buy. That's a 50% discount from all time highs. That's probably when I would have started thinking about scaling in, right? But the strategy here, what I'm trying to differentiate is that we put in higher dollar amounts as we go down. So you'll see if Hex had a top at 50 and now it's down to 25 cents, we want to be careful, but we like that discount, right? Because basically that's a dip. And we always talk about buying the dip. 50% is a pretty, pretty big dip, pretty solid dip, par for the course in crypto. But that's when you'd be looking to start scaling it. Now we're going to start scaling in small with, let's say $500 at 25 cents. And we're only going to buy 2000 hex here because, you know, potentially, as we know, dips in crypto could be, especially in a bear market, 85 to 95%. This is a normal thing. This has happened four times now in crypto's history. It's We're currently in the fifth cycle and uh, just wait and see. Anyway, we're going to scale in with higher dollar amounts as the price dips harder, right? So when Hex dips even harder from 25 to 20 cents, we're going to go harder with our money. We're going to put in one grand. When Hex goes to 15 cents, we're going to put in 1500. When it goes to 11 cents, we're going to go to put in 2000. And when Hex goes down to 8 cents, we're going to put in 2500. If you would have done this, and I just picked these hex price amounts semi arbitrarily, you know, 25 cents was a perfect 50% off from the high. And then these 15, 11 and eight cent ranges are kind of support lines. And you know how to draw a support line on a chart, right? It's kind of where the price tends to hover and, you know, stop and stick around that for a little while before bouncing up and up or down. Uh, but let's say you kind of identified some crude rudimentary support and resistance lines and you scaled in at these price points and you increased your buys every time. The power of doing this is exponential because look at how much hex you're buying at the low you're buying 31,250 hex at the low whereas that initial 500 you put in only bought you 2,000 hex so the lower we go the more you actually want to put in because this ends up with you putting in a total of seven thousand five hundred dollars but now you have 66,000 hex so 7.5k divided by 66k is roughly 11.2 cents now that's a really good cost basis right you're pretty much right above this 11 cent mark so we're at seven cents today, but we're only down four cents from that 11 cent mark, as opposed to where you initially bought, which was 25 cents. So if you didn't blow your entire load at 25 cents and you had more, more dry powder to spare at these lower prices, you could really weigh yourself down and have your average be at these really lower levels. That's what I'm trying to portray here. And finally, we're going to go look at just a rough, you know, kind of the perfect scenario in my point of view of when we're gonna to wanna to start looking at scaling down. So I know that crypto is volatile. If you don't know that already, well, welcome to crypto, okay? If this is really your first rodeo. You gotta know what game you're playing, okay? Crypto is like the stock market on steroids. You can lose a lot of money, you can win a lot of money, but you have to have the stomach for the volatility. The only way you can make mad gains in this market is if you withstand the extreme volatility conditions. So me, when I'm looking at a chart, yeah, 50% off is great, but and it's easy to say this in retrospect, right? But this would have kind of been an ideal dollar cost average strategy on the way down. And you can still do it, especially because we're at these low points right now. 
it's actually way more attractive. So we're going to take a hypothetical scenario about what you could have done. But bear in mind that this is all looking at the past. And when we're looking at the future, it's even more attractive to buy right now, in my humble opinion, right? None of this is financial advice, but because we're at these 90 and 85% lows, it gets easier and easier and less and less likely that you're really going to be down for that long when you're scaling in and putting in heavier amounts at these lower price points. But for example, at a 75% discount from all time highs, that's when I'd be really looking to buy and saying, wow, 75%, we'll, we dip a lot in hacks. We dip 40 to 60% often, but 75% is a pretty good amount. So let's start scaling in with our first DCA uh, rung, ladder of the rung, so to speak, at 75% off, which is about 12.8 cents. Let's just round it to about 13 cents. And look at all the times, guys, that hacks hit 13 cents. It hit it here, but you know, let's say for the sake of the example that we didn't actually buy here, because we then we saw this huge pump and we wanted to see if hex would make a, a higher high and it didn't right and so it kept dipping again well i'd probably be looking to buy right here at this 75 percent dip again so this is the second 75 percent dip and because it dipped lower that would be my signal of okay this is looking pretty bad we're probably in for quite a bit more months of a bear market so this might be my first one thousand dollar entry point right into the at that 12.9 let's just round up to 13 cents for the sake of the example maybe it's 12.9 maybe it's 13.2 you know whatever and then we bounce around here and this volatility kind of gets compressed for a little bit and we have many more opportunities to buy that 13 cent range and because of the uncertainty in which direction we're going and you know the pulse chain launch hype which gave us this mini pump up to 20 cents here i might not have bought in every single you know time that we passed that 13 cent mark, but I would have had so many opportunities. So it's realistic to say maybe you'd buy it once more somewhere around here and maybe once more somewhere around here. Now, as we go down to an 80% dip, we'd want to scale in with even more money. So let's increment and put another $500 in. So let's put 1500 in an 80% dip, right? That would give us that 10 cent range. And so you might've bought once right here if you were lucky enough to catch that 10 cent range, but we did not stay there for long, right? Because we quickly went to an 85% dip an 85% dip is at a price point of about 7.7 .7 cents, okay? And you've had, you would have had a great buying opportunity here. And you have one again today at 6.7 cents right now at the time of this video. But then guys, where you want to get really greedy with your dollar cost averaging is when we really go to Goblin Town, as they say. So these are your 90% dips and anything more than 90% dip in crypto for something that you have conviction in. And trust me, I have conviction in Hex, okay? You don't have to, I don't care if you buy hacks or not, but I have a lot of conviction. So anything at a 90, 91, 92, 93% off discount is a huge golden opportunity zone for me. And this is where I'd wanna be scaling in with the most money, right? These $2,500 buys. And again, this is all an example, right? But this is kind of, uh, let's say what I would recommend to myself if I had to do this again. So you'd wanna put a limit order at this 90% discount opportunity zone and that's at about five cents hacks and you'll notice that we touched it really briefly for one day only with this giant wick right here but if you were smart enough to watch my previous video or learn how to set a limit order on matcha.xyz link in description below you would have caught this wick and this would have really helped out your overall average cost because look at what would have happened over on the spreadsheet here we can visualize what we just saw on this chart over on the spreadsheet so we had three buys at 13 cents, but those were our, you know, only $1,000 buys. We had one at 10 cents for 1,500, one at 7.7 .7 cents for two grand, and then one at five cents for 2,500. Doing the math again, guys, as a refresher, we add up everything in this column. So the total amount of money we put in was $9,000. The total amount of hex we bought was all these added together, which is 114,000 hex, right? And then you go 9,000 divided by 114,000 gives you your cost basis of 7.9 cents. And that's an incredible cost basis because at this point, you're basically, you've dollar cost averaged at the dips in the ideal way, right? You've, had, you've dollar cost averaged at these 80, 85%, 90% discounts, and you're putting in more and more money, remember, as we go down. So this is the ideal strategy for dollar cost averaging at the dips. That's what we mean when we say that, okay? So it's important to keep in mind some of these nuances because look at what a great, you know, effective entry price you have. It's 7.9 cents, it's not 20 cents. You're basically, if we have a good day tomorrow and we go up 25%, well, guess what? You're already in profit. Not to mention, if you're staking your hex the whole time, guys, you don't have to really worry about any of that because that hex is making you interest. So in a year from now, you're already up you know, 20%, 30%, depending on what your average APY is for all your hex stakes. And you should be staking, guys. The staking ladder strategy is the other end of the coin, right? That's kind of how you exit, right? When your stakes are done, 
you sell the yield and you just continue on with your life and you restake the principal, you know, maintain your level of T shares. That's a whole other side of the coin, but we're in a bear market. So we're talking about the buying strategy, not necessarily the selling strategy. But if you guys have been here for a while, you know the staking ladder. It's a very basic concept as well. So guys, that's dollar cost averaging in a nutshell. So when you dollar cost average, you want to make sure you're dollar cost averaging at the dips. What are some pros of this? Obviously, you don't need to concern yourself with day-to-day -day volatility. You can make some limit orders on matcha.xyz. You can set it and forget it. There's no need for perfect timing. Okay, it lowers the impacts psychologically uh, of the volatility that you're experiencing relative to your buy orders. Plus, as a nice bonus, if you are somebody that's working for paychecks every week, every two weeks, you know, it depends how you get paid. If you have your own business, obviously, it's a lot more sporadic. But this dollar cost average strategy really pairs up nicely with a nine to five, you know, paycheck type of job. So personally, my dollar cost averaging was a lot more structured back when I had a nine to five job. Now I have my own business. I work for myself and I can DCA kind of whenever I want. So I do it more off intuition and gut feelings. But when I was getting paychecks, you know, I would personally just add, you know, 20% of my paycheck and toss that into crypto, you know, into Coinbase and then get off into Ethereum. So this might work out well for your lifestyle, depending on uh, who you are. And there's no one size fits all. Okay. So I just went over a couple of scenarios, but there's no perfect way to do it. This was probably the ideal strategy, but you know, you could be a robot about it. You could be, you know, a little smarter and you could be real smart and really start to scale in at the lower and lower dips. Now, what are some cons? Well, first of all, you might find yourself holding on to cash for a little longer. And the longer your undeployed cash goes undeployed, the bigger opportunity cost you're sacrificing. But in a dip in a bear market, this isn't such a big deal to worry about. You know, you have to have patience in these bear markets. And guys, we're probably in for another three to six months of bear at minimum, right? So you are holding on to cash and that cash could be used to your advantage. It could be used to be earning you yield in hex, for example. But I wouldn't get too hung up on needing to get rid of your cash right away. You can you can hold it for a while. You can wait till your price points re are reached and you can wait patiently until your limit orders are executed. But another con, of course, is actually there's more gas fees. So the more transactions you do, the more gas you have to pay. And right now we're looking at, you know, 50 to $100 sometimes right on Ethereum. Another pro of a bear market is that because Ethereum itself is down so much and because generally the activity on chain is, is dwindling a little bit, you actually have a little bit cheaper fees in this current environment, but it's still not negligible, right? And so that's why I'm using values of $1,000 and, and stuff around that level, because it really is tough, guys, if you're using values of $100 or less, it really is tough. So I would try to save up at least a couple of hundred dollars at a time per entry point, because otherwise you're going to get eaten alive by gas fees. And that's really sad. And I get it. It's a really, really sad situation that we're in. But hey, that's what Paul Chain is for. That's literally what we're going to be saved from on Pulse Chain. So everybody will be able to get in Pulse Chain because gas fees are going to be one penny, right? But in conclusion, guys, timing matters, okay? Dollar cost averaging at the dips is what I'm referring to in, in terms of timing. When should you be looking for that, that big juicy dip? Well, I like 75%, 80, 85%, 90. Why not just go in 5% increments from a 75% dip? You do it your way. Obviously, I'm not telling you what to do. I never give financial advice. But 75% seems like a good place to start for me. And then don't be surprised, guys, if even at your 75% dip, which remember was 13 cents, it can easily go down another 50% relative to that 75% dip. So for example, 7 cents is an 85% dip, 13 cents is a 75% dip, but from here down to here, from that 75% down to 85%, relative to that order, that's 50% right? Because you're going from 13 cents to 7 cents. Relatively, that's 50%. Does that make sense? So you're still going to feel the pain of loss during dollar cost averaging. It just helps mitigate it a little bit, or actually a lot, depending how well you do it. And remember, guys, from your first DCA point, you're probably going to go down, you know, another 50%. But that should only be a trigger for you to put in yet another dollar cost average point. Now, crypto is cyclical. We know this. The bear market is in full force, but the bull market's going to come again. Guys, these things never usually last longer than a year. And depending who you ask, we're already six months to nine months through the bear market, right? Or through, through the one year from the highs, at least from Bitcoin's perspective. So the cycle will come again. Crypto comes and goes and we shake out weekends and then we start pumping all over again, guys. And again, more money at lower targets, right? 500, 1,000, 1,500. The lower the targets go, the greedier you should be getting, the more money you should be scaling in with. So this is the best way that I can try to summarize dollar cost averaging for you guys. 
Hopefully, if you haven't heard the term before, now you have a, somewhat of an understanding. I know it's a very basic concept, right? So for a lot of you guys, you're probably thinking, well, duh. But, you know, share this video with somebody that's a total noob, that's brand new to investing, because this is where the real generational wealth is made. Limit orders, dollar cost averaging, buying the dips, bigger increments at bigger dips, and so on and so forth. If you do all this stuff, you're going to have your seat at the table. You're going to have your ticket on the spaceship for the next bull run. And I hope to see you there. I really do.